being on the Big Island. I, this is, uh, in many ways for me, a homecoming. Every time I come here, my grandmother is from Papai Ko. Uh, I went to uh, school for a little while at Waik Waikia Elementary, which is no longer there, got wiped out by the uh, 56 uh, tsunami. But every time I see Suisan, every time I see the old Hilo Ironworks, and I reminisce driving up the street today in downtown about the, the sampans that I, I drove in uh, as a scared young child. Uh, it was not, it was interesting. If you guys are from Hilo, and you remember, and you know what a sampan was. So I really appreciate being here. I also want to point out, I will introduce my staff uh, to you, but uh, up front uh, is Mark Kaetsu. Mark, can you just kind of wave? Now he's a Hilo boy. He works for us. He's a proud graduate of the uh, of Hilo High School. <laughs> You're a popular guy, Mark. And he took us today to Do Don's. Don's, yes, because uh, Hawaiian style was closed until five o'clock. Uh, I'd like to, at this time, introduce the commission staff. Uh, you will not hear about them often, and you will not see them at all, but they are the lifeblood, the muscle, everything uh, for the commission. We are only as good as the staff. And so I'd first like to introduce my uh, executive officer, Del Juan. Uh, my, to my right is um, the chief counsel, uh, Tom Gorek, for whom Mark Taitsu works. Uh, they do produce attorneys out of Hilo. And to the, at, at the end of the table is Jay Griffin. He's uh, a, uh, a chief of the policy research section. And in the middle is uh, from the policy research section, we call him the big guy, David Veltri, who's gonna be our timer tonight. I would also like to at this time acknowledge uh, uh, from the Office of the Consumer Advocate is Johnny Tomura here. John here. Hey John, stand up. Uh, he's from the Office of the Consumer Advocate. Uh, you probably heard about him. They filed uh, memos in this case. Also, uh, two elected officials. Um, one, uh, a good friend of mine. Uh, we served together in the state senate. Um, Senator Lorraine Inouye. And uh, also, I saw him, Senator Russell Rutherman. If others come in, we will uh, introduce them as they come in. In order number 32695, dated March 2nd, uh, 2015, the Commission determined that it would conduct public listening sessions in docket number 2015. 0022 in the matter of, matter of the application of Hawaiian Electric Company Inc., Hawaiian Electric Light Company Inc., Maui Electric Company Limited, and Nextera Energy Inc. The Commission is not required by law to conduct these sessions. However, the Commission is of the view that providing members of the public, and I emphasize this, who are not members or parties to the proceeding, the opportunity to address the Commission concerning whether the proposed transaction is appropriate. We want, to, we want to hear from you. And for your convenience, we have pamphlets which were up front. There's two things, three things. First, it sets out the 18 issues that the Commission will have to address and the parties will have to address. For all of you who are testifying tonight, Please look over those issues. We are restricted to those issues. Some may want to talk about matters which are not directly uh, affecting those issues, and we welcome your testimony. But please understand that we are here to hear your comments about specifically the 18 issues. Please be advised that the Commission will not respond to any questions. First and foremost, this is your listening session. We are here to listen to you. 
Second, because this is pending before the Commission, it would be inappropriate for the Commission to comment or to respond to questions regarding this docket. These listening sessions will be conducted on each island served by Hiko, the Hiko companies, Oahu, Maui, Lanai, Molokai. Tonight, Hawaii, we will also have a listening session on Kauai. After these listening sessions, the Commission will be conducting a trial-like evidentiary hearing commencing on November 30th, 2015. At the conclusion of the hearing process, the Commission will take the matter under advisement. The ground rules for tonight. There will be three minutes to speak, each speaker. If you desire to provide more testimony for the record to the Commission, again, if you look at the back of the uh, pamphlet, you will see an address you can email your comments to. We do not, we want you to submit all the comments you want to, but tonight it's three minutes verbal. Second, we ask, and I will tell you that having been now to Maui, Lanai, Molokai, um, all, be, please be respectful of one another and their ideas. This is not a booing session. We are here to listen to comments, objective, sober, respectful comments on the 18 issues that are before the Commission. Extraneous matters are not going to help us. And I'm sure none of you have come out here tonight to be unhelpful. <coughs> now, finally, some of my friends are involved in this. We heard, uh, we have heard there are going to be a lot of comments about the merits of, 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 a, of, of, a, of the energy cooperative. We want to hear from you. We welcome your comments. But I do wish to say to you that if you look at the 18 issues that are before us, it's not directly deal with whether or not uh, a, cooper a cooperative is better than the present, the status quo. That is not the issue or are the issues before us. We are looking at the parties, the applicants, and the 18 issues. If you wish to testify about the benefits of a cooperative, please feel free to do so. Again, you all came out here for a reason, and we are thankful for this nice crowd that we have tonight. But as we move forward, if there are many more people testifying about cooperatives, please feel free to come up to the mic and say, I adopt the testimony of the person before me. That will help to expedite matters. It will get your name on the record. It will get your position on the record, which I'm sure you want to show us tonight. But I think it's in fairness to everyone uh, dealing that will address the specific issues that we, if you could do that. Uh, finally, um, we have a mic here. We're just going to call you up. If you have not signed up to testify, please sign up. We're not going to necessarily call you in the order that you test signed up. We're going to have that mic. It's an open mic, to come, well not an open mic, you can come up, we're just gonna, I'm gonna, at the end of this, I'm gonna say please come up and testify. And we're gonna keep calling you as you, keep, as you come up. All right? And finally, please understand that three minutes is not to restrict, because we don't wanna hear from you. There's a lot of people here tonight. And we want to provide everyone with an opportunity to provide testimony while people are still here. I don't want you to be the last person and everyone has left. So, first, person to testify, please approach the microphone and identify yourself, and please say whether you oppose or support or take no position on the proposed application. Anyone here to testify? Go ahead. Again, please identify yourself and please state your position on the proposed transaction. Um, good evening. Thank you for coming to Hawaii Island. I'm Corey Harden. I'm opposing the proposed transaction. Um, I'm happy that NextEra came to Hawaii 
but I will be even happier when they leave. I'm happy they came because they have started, jump-started the conversation in Hawaii about the best model of utility ownership and about renewable energy. I hope that conversation will include thorough consideration of county-owned utilities and or co-op utilities. These models would meet local control instead of control by strangers thousands of miles away. It would mean profits returned to the people, not going to millionaire executives. And it could mean much greater focus on renewable energy. At the Hilo Next Era open house, it was carefully orchestrated, so there was no public speaking to reveal the downside of Next Era. And the Next Era rep tried to convince me that they were coming to Hawaii to help us out. And that, I think, is a lot of kimchi. They're a huge corporation out to maximize profits. They're not a nonprofit. And they're feeding us a lot of, a lot of kimchi like um, they're making no actual commitment to lower our electric bills. They are sounding like no local employees will be lost, though that could happen. They are refusing to provide an energy plan until after the takeover. They're hiring lobbyists and giving tens of thousands of dollars to state politicians. They're trying to block public involvement and discovery requests at the Public Utilities Commission. They're planning to use liquefied natural gas in Hawaii, claiming that's only temporary, despite the tremendous cost of converting to LNG. Um, where Next Area delivers energy in other states, they try to block energy efficiency actions so they can sell more, buy more, sell more energy. And they use about two thirds fossil gas, one quarter nuclear energy, and less than 1% solar. Next era has drawn fire from the usual suspects, Life of the Land and Sierra Club and Earth Justice, but also our own county government, the Star Advertiser, your guys' consumer advocate, the State Office of Planning, the State Department of Business, Economic Development and Tourism, and Governor Ige. So I thank Next Era for coming, but I hope now they will leave. Thank you. Thank you. Now before, I, uh, before the next person comes up, I'd like to take this opportunity to, to uh, acknowledge, and I thank this point, point's president, Representative Onishi. Are, are you here, Representative Onishi? Oh, thank you. There he is back there. Thank you for coming. Next, anyone else testify? Just come up to the mic. Please identify yourself, state your position. Uh, my name is Joy Cash, and I'm a resident of Hilo. And I'm uh, here tonight to express my concern with a mainland uh, corporation coming in. I'm very concerned with their headquarters being on the mainland and their profits going to the mainland instead of staying in uh, Hawaii. Um, I know that across the United States, counties are looking to and implementing successfully um, cooperatives and community-owned utilities, um, therefore keeping the profits locally, recycling. The, you know, and this is not the era of the 80s and 90s, as we all know. Um, this is not the era to be paying um, CEOs $100,000 a month out of our uh, pockets. And each of us are rate payers, so we understand that. And then we have the business owners that should be very, very concerned about this as well. So it's, it's a new era, not next era. It's a new era of people, communities coming together and owning their own power. Uh, so um, I, I'm sure you're very wise in your decision, as you've heard um, Corey uh, with her litany of people who are against Next Era, including our governor. So um, we need to do this not only for ourselves, but for our children and our grandchildren. We leave a legacy behind us. So thank you very much for Thank that. you. Next. If you want to speak, just come up to the microphone. 
Thank you for coming. My Thanks. name's Andrea Rosanoff. I live in Pahoa, Hawaii. And I um, want to speak against the uh, merger of HECO with Next Era. I don't think I'm going to talk a little bit about on your docket 1A and 2B. First of all, uh, is it, would it be the best interests of the communities? And here on the Big Island, I can see how maybe with Oahu uh, that that might make some sense for a company to come in from out of state and, and take that business. Um, but on the Big Island, it's a very different situation. And our power is extremely important to us. And it's very wide, wide area compared with the other islands. And so it's very difficult to distribute that energy, especially with the old system that we have there. And I cannot imagine a company coming in to the state of Hawaii without realizing what a unique situation we have on the Big Island. And I really doubt that they would be able to uh, cater to the special needs that the Big Island has for their energy and for the future. And so that concerns me very much. The other thing that bothers me about it is, is that this whole deal is an all thing. We can't break up um, Big Island from the, from the deal. And this concerns me because it precludes the future of our island if, if we need it to uh, break out as an, into a co-op. And if we have the private ownership, um, because they have to go for profits, they can't help but result in incentives for utilities to spend as much as they can get justified by you guys. And that, of course, is going to lead to higher rates, which we don't need on this island. It's the, the last thing in the world we need. The other thing that concerns me about it, that, and I don't know if this is true or not, <clears throat> but of course we have the only geothermal plant in the state, and it's right near where I live. And I understand the, uh, the idea of uh, renewable energy and um, clean energy and the push for that. Of course, that's the future of everybody, not just the Big Island, and we're very interested in that. But what I'm concerned about with this particular merger is that they, I have heard talk about uh, seeing the geothermal for uh, a much larger resource than it actually is at this point. And of course, it's, there's a lot of issues with, since I live right close to it, that I'm very familiar with that are probably not widespread and known so much on Oahu, that this uh, geothermal thing, the energy is going to be able to somehow be transported somehow through a cable or some other way over to Oahu, and that uh, perhaps a company such as NextEra might be able to get a grant to start something like that. And then, um, and if that were the case, I don't think this would be a wise Please way. Please summarize. Please summarize. Okay. I don't think it's a good idea for us to do it. I don't think it's what's best for the Big Island, which is the only place I live. It's a unique situation, and you have to take that into account. And so I oppose this merger as it stands at this time. Thank you. Uh, before our next speaker, uh, I would like to uh, acknowledge the presence and thank her for coming. Uh, council Member Valerie Poindexter. Is uh, Council Member Poindexter here? Okay, thank you. Please identify yourself and state your position. Hi, my name is Ruth Robison, R-O-B-I-S-O-N. Thank you for holding this listening session at Hilo High School tonight. I have been a resident of Hilo since 1982. I oppose the change of control proposed by Hawaiian Electric Company uh, at all and Next Era Energy. I believe that all parties, I'd like to give them the benefit of the doubt, HECO, Next Era, and the Hawaii Island Energy Cooperative want to accomplish the goals stated by Governor Ige of becoming completely energy self-sustaining using 100% renewable sources by 2045. However, I favor the business model of a not-for-profit not energy cooperative for Hawaii Island over the for-profit business model that would continue under the proposed merger. Without needing to include a profit margin in its pricing, an energy cooperative would be able to provide energy to its members at a lower cost. The incentive of a for-profit energy business to make money tends to drive up rates for consumers. On average, the residents of Hawaii Island are not wealthy people and could use the savings on electricity for other things like food and medical care. 
I am also concerned that the current agreement includes the stipulation that NextEra would not sell for at least 10 years. So if we proceed with this merger, it could be, I could be dead by the time we will be able to consider the possibility of an energy cooperative on Hawaii Island again. I urge the PUC to leave HELCO out of the proposed merger to enable it to be sold to the Hawaii, energy, Hawaii Island Energy Cooperative in the near future. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Hang on. It's a little short. Anyway, I got it. Good evening. Uh, John Olson here. You want your name again? John Olson. Go ahead, Ms. Olson. We're having technical difficulty here. Okay, thank you. Um, I oppose this docket. Um, on numerous grounds. I don't think that it is going to be in the interest of this island. I don't think it is going to be in the interest of any of the smaller islands. Um, I oppose the way this, merger, this docket has been constructed, combining the separate companies that are owned by HEI. Um, in the past, we have had some say in the integrated resource planning process as to how our electric grid, electrical energy would be supplied and structured. Um, we had a uh, recent weather event and it took supposedly the interests of the local utility and help from, the, from Oahu, from AGI, uh, a significant amount of time to respond appropriately to that event. And I believe that is primarily because um, they simply decided that they'd get to us when they got to us. We don't have a separate process. We need a separate process. We are not Oahu, we're not Maui. We are 10 times or nine times larger than any other island in the chain. And we deserve consideration as the freestanding island that we are. So um, the, the things as to whether it is going to be in the best interest of this community, no, this merger is not. And any merger, that combines all of the island's utilities in this state as if somehow we were actually physically connected. We are not. I can honestly tell you that had the storm been worse, the light still wouldn't be on here. The harbor would have been damaged. There would have been no supplies coming from anywhere. The physics of it does not allow for that. We need a unit here supplying our energy that is here specifically to support our needs. If you can't accomplish that, this is a failure. It's a failure. Thank you. Thank you. Next. Hi, I'm Jim Wyban, and I am a homeowner and have a house in Curtistown, and I owned a business uh, based at the Natural Energy Lab in Kona for about 20 years, and I added up all my rates that I've paid to Helco over those 20, last 20 years, and it's somewhere around $400,000, so uh, Helco is near and dear to me. I should own a percentage of it, I think. And um, anyways, I wanted to speak directly to some of the issues on your docket. The first one, whether the proposed transactions in the public interest the first item is that the profits from the operation of HEI or Next Era, whoever, would leave Hawaii, and these are draining precious monies from our small local economy. Hawaii is a small economy. Um, at the time, just when the uh, state legislature set the goal of achieving 100% renewable energy, Next Era wants to come in with a business model that is totally 20th century in terms of energy. Shareholder owned, vertically integrated, fossil fuel driven. It's a dinosaur and Hawaii should be a leader in energy. And let me say, I'm opposed to the merger. 
um, Next Era has provided no evidence, and I've followed this closely in the media, they've provided no evidence that Hawaii ratepayers will either have a benefit in improved service or lower rates. Um, whether the applicants are fit, I have a brother who's a retiree in homeowner in Florida who is subject to the Florida Power Company and he tells me they are terrible, horrible company. He wanted to put solar on his roof, spent six months battling with them, couldn't do it. Um, they have uh, intermittent brownouts and blackouts all the time and he said they're just terrible. Their infrastructure maintenance has been horrible and so they have a lot of problems. Finally, is there a preferred alternative? I believe that the notion of the um, Big Island Energy Cooperative provides an excellent alternative model. And we know in the proposed merger with NextEra that they're going to spin off the bank subsidiary, so they already have the legal uh, commitment or capability of s spinning off some of the subsidiaries. I recommend that. Helco be spun off from whatever happens, even if Next Era takes over. Helco gets spun off. We established the Big Island Energy Cooperative here, and the ratepayers then Please are summarize. shareholders. I'm opposed to this merger. Thank you. Proceed. Aloha. Aloha. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to prevent the, uh, present the testimonies today. My name is Nelson Hull. I grew up on Oahu and moved to the Big Island in 1979. My wife and I have rooftop solar water heater and solar electric panels. Our state does not need a bigger and stronger HECO. And that's one of the reasons I am opposing the docket as it is now. We need a different kind of utility with a reformed business model instead. Uh, as proven earlier, Next Era has a horrible record in Florida, and I think that they would treat the um, island utilities much the same manner, unfortunately. Uh, and I don't think that throughout their performance in this docket, Next Era has shown a real commitment to following the state energy policies or doing things in the best interest of Hawaii ratepayers. Um, finally, I'd like to just do one exercise for my own education. And I'd like to ask the audience, Anybody who's opposed to the next era merger as it's now, could you please stand or raise your hand? I'm just curious, personally. Okay, okay, thank you very much. Um, one last thing, thank you so much for opening up the November 30th, 30th uh, evidentiary hearings um, to the media. I think you're doing a great service to continue the discussion about our future of our, our energy in Hawaii. Just so thank you. Thank you, Ms. Hello. Next. Hello, thank you for this opportunity. My name is Joe Kent and I'm a concerned resident of La Pohoihoi. I oppose the merger with the next Stara. I do not think it serves the public's interest. I believe the number of residential photovoltaic applications that are before HELCO is a testimony to the public's interest. And if you look at Nextera's track record, most of those applications probably won't get approved. They haven't been in Florida, they're not going to be here just as they currently are not with HELCO. The rate pairs, they want to pay competitive rates and they also want to choose where their energy comes from. And I think anything that proceeds, or any the dis final decision, whatever it is, it needs to be in, supporter, in support of residential solar. There are dozens of solar companies here who are all competing on rates, which would ensure that the rates remain competitive and low, and that technology advances, and that customers' interests are best served, because otherwise the companies are gonna lose business. If a resident wishes to have residential solar, they should be able to get it 
and not have to wait a year or a year and a half and keep paying hundreds of dollars to Elko every single month. Thank you. Thank you. My name is John Otto, born and raised in this county, a retired citizen today. I strongly oppose the acquisition. Many articles were written concerning this acquisition. Generalized and technical words in the articles presented an appearance that the consumer will benefit from the acquisition. If the PUC approves the acquisition, the working procedures will ignore the verbally stated promises of rate reduction. Misleading half-truth provided to the customers on this island has provided, was provided by Halco for many years. I do not believe the next era will provide electrical rate reduction to consumers on this island. I might add, I owned a home in Florida. My monthly rate was $700 to $1,200 a month. It was one of the highest rates in the, all of U.S. for a long, long time. Next era headquarters is in Florida. Cons customer complaints will be ignored. I attended majority of the previous meetings pertaining to energy on this island. Geothermal, alternate power, Big Island grid, Conat geothermal, underwater cable, power to Oahu, and etc. Alco justified the grid creating stating to improve electrical services on this island. Statement is misleading. Transfer of electrical power to Oahu was the real intent. Consumers on this island paid for the creation of this grid with PUC approval. A consumer rate reduction was never provided to consumers after alternate energy was online. Instead, new rate charges appeared on the monthly billings. Rate reduction stated at the meetings never became a reality. Lies, half-truth, misleading statement became common occurrence. Will this meeting with the public encourage the PUC to listen and act on consumer complaints? I support Hawaii Energy Cooperative to replace HALCO. It is a long overdue relief from HALCO, HEI, and next era type operations. Public ownership of energy production and distribution on this island provides full control to the consumers on this island. Mr. Ota, please summarize. Please summarize. Your I time only is got up. two more sentences. Why How long are the sentences? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> go, ahead, go, ahead, go, ahead. go ahead, go ahead. Why is it not possible for PUC to approve the Big Island Electric Cooperative to provide electrical power and distribution? The Public Ownership Cooperative in Kauai receive PUC blessing and consumers enjoy a lower electrical rate compared to Oahu, Maui, and Hawaii Island. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Oka. Uh, before we uh, go on, we have another uh, public official who has uh, taken the time to come out tonight. Uh, a friend of mine, a true gentleman, Representative uh, Cliff Suji. Cliff, aloha. Thanks for coming, Cliff. Go ahead. Hello, my name is Jeff Shaw, and um, I would just like to point out that the um, a subsidiary of Next Air is building a, a um, next generation nuclear power plant at Turkey Point in Florida, and I, for one, would want not want to have anything to do with nuclear power, and I hope that many people would agree with me. It's something that we need to put to rest. You know, ever since um, Three Mile Island, they haven't built a nuclear power plant. They're getting around to, to you know, starting that process again. And I think it's just something that needs to be 
eliminated and having a, a large corporation that supports nuclear power is not in our best interest. And, um, Do you oppose the transaction? Yeah, yeah, I oppose the transaction. Thank you. Sorry. Um, <laughs> I, I think it would be easier if you just, you know, wait till somebody actually um, wants it. <laughs> but anyhow, um, getting back to my point about um, nuclear power, um, you know, they, they still haven't found a way to store the waste, you know, and. Like, individually, we have to learn from our mistakes, but it seems like collectively, you know, these large corporations figure out a way to keep compounding their mistakes over and over and over again. And we would be better off if we started looking at smaller um, ways to deal with these issues. And, um, you know, the, another thing is that the grid itself is could probably be eliminated in another 10 years if we just went that direction and um, a lot of waste happens just in the grid itself. 50% of the power that gets produced wherever it gets produced gets wasted before it gets to your plug in your house or more. So anyhow, those are my points. And Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Please state your name and your position. Kim Magnuson and uh, I'm opposed to the merger and I'm from Popeye Co. And I'd like to address uh, the first issue with number A, whether it says whether approval of the proposed transaction would be in the best interest of the state's economy and community served by eco companies. What's in the best interest is lower rates. Every business person in here, we complain that Hawaii is not friendly to business. Look at the rates. Look at how many more employees could be hired if rates were lower. The second highest in the U.S. is half of, of what we pay here. So I don't believe that NextEra has a good track record. Solar, they have a terrible track record. If you skip to C, it says whether the proposed transaction will impact the ability of HECO company employees to provide safe, adequate, reliable services at reasonable cost. Those three things, I don't think either HECO or Nextera have shown. Nothing. If you skip over to number two, whether the applicants are fit, willing, and able to properly provide safe, adequate, reliable electric service at the lowest reasonable cost in both short and long term. Have they shown that? Has that been exhibited yet? That's the question being asked. And whether the proposed transaction, if approved, will enhance or detrimentally impact the state's clean energy goals. They have been fighting clean energy in Florida for years. I have solar here. You generate the electricity close to where you use it so you don't lose much in transmission. We can go over to Number three, whether the proposed transaction, if approved, would diminish in any way the Commission's current regulatory authority over the ECO. I don't know. I don't know. And the last one, number six, whether any conditions are necessary to ensure that the proposed transaction is not detrimental to the interests of ECO companies, rate payers, or the state, and to avoid the best thing is lower rates. If they can't lower the rates substantially, Every school, every government building, every businessman, every individual using their electricity will be spending more than they need to where they could be improving our economy. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, um, my name is Dean Au with the Carpenters Union, uh, Hawaii Regional Council of Carpenters. Um, we're here in support of the merger. And I did bring some of our members over here, so raise your hand, members in the back. Okay, we represent 6,000 families in the state of Hawaii, and we're all tired of paying high electricity rates. So we, we, we feel Nextera and HECO, with, with this merger, we can achieve that 100% renewable energy in 2045. So we are in uh, strong support of the merger. And I like to do an exercise just like 
our friend uh, Mr. Nelson Ho. Um, can I get a raise of hands or please stand up for the people that are in support of this merger? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next. Yeah, aloha. Uh, my name is aloha. Valerie Poindexter. And I'm here not as a county council rep, but I'm here as a community concerned citizen. And I am actually going to speak um, on a neutral basis and of concern of, um, and I'm hoping that what you do is you do diligence so that you make the right decision for Hawaii Island. And I trust that you will. And I just bring some concerns of when Hamakua Sugar closed the demise of the entire sugar industry on the Big Island. And what we saw was an influx of people coming in and predatory lenders taking advantage of our people. And now that this merger is going on and we're having this, um, you know, pull, you know, the hakaka, they call that, here, we're having predator lenders come in again with solar. And I've seen that in my community where they go house to house, and they've been loading people up and saying, we're going to give you all these solar panels for free. You're going to cut down the electricity rate. We're going to hook you up in a 20-year contract. When I had them come and talk to me, they didn't know I was a county council person, my rate was going to be $169 fixed for 20 years. And they were going to load my rooftop with more panels than I actually needed. But I wasn't going to benefit from those credits. So all I'm saying is people be mindful of what we're doing and look at every corner because there's people coming in beneath us from the back door and they're stifling our poor people and people on fixed incomes and doing predatory lending because a lot of them don't qualify for these big loans to do solar at a regular bank, but they qualify with those people coming in. It's not, I'm not talking about our grassroots um, solar energy companies, because we have reputable solar companies here on our island. But we're seeing now so many new solar companies, like we did during the crisis of the demise of the sugar industry. So I'm cautioning us on what we're doing. So when I heard one testifier said, they're getting, HECO is getting loaded with applications. It's because we have those solar predatory lenders out there that are developing their real estate on people's roofs. So I ask that you make the right decision and the best decision for the Hawaii Island, our beautiful island. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you. Next. I was willing to go to the back of the line, but this nice lady put me right here. My name is Lei Kalamau, and I suppose I'm going to oppose the merger because I usually stay home and mind my own business, but I was uh, inspired to come out of the woodworks to speak my mind. Uh, first of all, the first thing I want to say is uh, in 1986 to 2003, I lived on Kauai, and I was in the midst of Kauai Electric and the co-op up there to uh, make that transition. And uh, that was when the PUC chose the co-op to run the electric. And as I sat in my house, like I am every day, uh, the transition was really smooth. I did not feel any strain on my electric bill. I felt that being a Hawaiian girl, born and raised in Hawaii, um, the, local, the local feeling of this uh, co-op made the transition good because I didn't feel like a takeover was coming again. And now, today, I read in the paper that Richard Ha invites us to come. You know what? I never met that man before, but I trust him. 
if he's going to be involved with this co-op, and if other businessmen like Barry Taniguchi uh, from KTA and all these other important people that know what they're doing, if they are going to be involved in bringing the transition from Helco to Hawaii Island Energy Co-op, then I would like to say that let it be that way. Let it still be local. Uh, let it not have someone to come and take over again. Is that, that's the feeling I was having when I first heard that you folks was coming. And I needed to come out and hear what other people are saying. So far, most have spoken against. And I'm surprised that, I suppose, I wanted to be neutral. I didn't want to offend nobody, but that's what I have to say. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you, Lynn. Please you identify yourself or state uh, your position. My name is R.J. Hampton, and I am opposed to this bailout merger. And I know that just because you graduated from Florida University, that this will not affect your uh, decision, I hope, Randy. Not, not on the merger, but football standings in the SEC. <laughs> okay. I have thought the same uh, sentiments as my uh, governor and a lot of people in and out of government. And the combination of HEI, the parent company of HECO, uh, you remember the PUC did uh, give them permission to start a holding company and uh, start a freighting company and do a lot of nice, wonderful things so that they could do wonderful things with their share owners. And one of the things that they said they would do is focus their attention on renewable energy. So they started a wind farm, but that wind farm didn't work. So they went along with the big thing that was going on, which was geothermal. We have somebody here today, uh, Mike Kalkinney from ORMAT. ORMAT, you know, power, uh, agreements had to be made. One was just made in 2011. I believe that it's not in the interest of the state to just hand over all these agreements, all these right-of-ways, all of this stuff that comes, that HECO gives, just runs it right over to a company from somewhere else. Ormat then already bailed on, sold 40% of, this is an Israeli company, so nothing's coming back to us on the island. They just sell some of it over to Canada, North Leaf. I'm sitting here trying to figure out what's coming back to us. Okay, they say they want to help. If they want to help, they come here, they can build an infrastructure, they can even show us how to operate it. But they're supposed to transfer it, or they're supposed to include us in it. They're supposed to show us something. I like kind of like Alaska. I kind of like a governor to sit down with the feds because we're outside of FERC, and even though the PUC has a memorandum of understanding and that they bless this merger, they don't got nothing to do with this. And the governor and you and everybody here can sit down and do what's right for this island and all the chain of the islands. And you know what that is? We need to do what we've been doing, being the leader of solar, and we need to figure out how to become the leader in storage. You see, so Randy said it in 2013, when everybody was rolling on with the solar in Oahu, we're up to 5%. The national average is 1%. I'm sure Next Era would like to come here and increase their renewable portfolio. I bet they'd like to come here and test out all their smart meters and grids. I bet they'd like to have the opportunity, but they don't have to own it. Please summarize. So Please I'm summarize. hoping that this couldn't possibly be in the public's interest. So I'm hoping that you'd investigate these people and just type in next era and scandal and you'll find out who these people really are. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening. Fred Fogel, Volcano, and my position is other. The consumer wants two things from any company, a good service at a reasonable price. There's only one thing that promotes this, the pressure that comes with a free market competition. 
No offense, but government-controlled monopoly does not foster or encourage competition. For example, Helco buys the electricity generated by Pura Geothermal for about 17 cents a kilowatt hour and sells it for twice that. No competition there. The bioenergy operation on the Hamakua Coast is in the same boat. No competition there. Now, the wind farm at South Point produces alternate energy, but its situation is a little different. Helco doesn't buy all the electricity generated. To the farm's credit, they make hydrogen from water with the excess energy, but still no competition there. And then there's the big bad beast on the building, solar. The only alternate energy source available to the average consumer. What happens when more consumers, like resorts and commercial buildings, start generating their own electricity? Or Parker Ranch? Or nonprofits like the Palace Theater? Or people simply say, the hell with the grid. The demand for electricity increases and the price goes up. Perhaps that's why Helco doesn't really support solar. Now, you probably will hear a lot of people promoting a co-op like the one on Kauai. The co-ops and Helco's rate schedules and PUC fees vary, so it's a little like comparing lemons and limes, but let's take a look at the cost to the average residential consumer using less than 30, 300 kilowatts per hour per billing period. Currently, the Kauai customer pays $103.97. The Helco customer pays $104.20, about 25 cents more. Now, you may look at it differently, but in my eyes, less than 1% savings is not akin to Moses coming down from the mountain. Whether it's Helco, a co-op, or Net Extra, oh, excuse me, Freudian slip, Next Era, the smell is the same. Dinky. If the PUC really wants to help the consumer, it would find a way to foster healthy competition, not perpetuate monopolies. Please summarize. Mahalo for the opportunity to speak my piece and good luck. Thank you. Yes, uh, my name is Alan Doherty. I'm a resident of Hilo and retired. I've been here for 30, 35 years. And uh, your issues here, whether the pub proposed transaction is in the public interest, I don't think it is in the public interest. And I don't think that, uh, frankly, the Public Utilities Commission has been doing much for the public interest. The only people who have been doing something for the public interest are the people who are pushing for a co-op here. Oh, no. and, and, and they have the, the, the... I mean, we pay such tremendous money in our rates here. It's unbelievable. We're four times what they do in the mainland. And why? To send the money to Wall Street. These companies, both of them are, are owned by Wall Street. And Wall Street is their map. Billions of dollars are sent from Hawaii. A poor country is being ripped off here. And uh, I'd like to uh, point out a few facts on publicly owned utilities. The island of Iceland is similar to the big island, a volcanic island with unlimited resources of thermal heat, which the Italians started using 120 years ago. And they charge their customers about three cents a kilowatt hour. And Helco charges us 10 times as much. And, and, uh, and there's no reason why we cannot have geothermal. Or Matt will put up a plant within a year or two years. But of course, the political <laughs> barriers are so extreme that that's a dream. <laughs> but uh, 
uh, and on and on uh, geothermal is 24 7 it's solar just when the sun shines wind just when the wind blows why not geothermal hell you could put a uh, uh, a couple of geothermal plants, one on each side of Kuuho, and one for West Hawaii, one for East Hawaii. And we could have Chiba talk about the grid, let them string some more copper lines. Yeah, copper's expensive, but it isn't that expensive. And put up more, more transformers. Why not? I mean, why not use some logic in this situation and reason and remember that uh, that the consumer is is foremost. You should do everything you sh you you can to promote cheap electricity for the consumer. Thank That's you. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Uh, before we go any further, um, I just wanted to remind everyone what we're here for tonight. We have 18 issues. Uh, please address those 18 issues. Uh, we understand that you came here to express an opinion, and we are, we'd like to hear it, and we thank you for it. But when we leave here, we have the duty to address these 18 issues. So uh, if you wish to deal with things that are not exactly related to these issues but has been spoken about by others, please feel free to say you adopt that testimony. Thank you. Please proceed. I'm sorry to have interrupted you. My name's Ron Becker. Ron Becker from uh, Kohala. Uh, I'm against the merger. Utilities, whether NextEra or HEI, are monopolies that are guaranteed by law a minimum 10% return. Their operating decisions are motivated by the quarterly dividends they pay their shareholders and their return on investment, which drives their share price. The health and welfare of their customers is of little concern to them. This can easily be proven by examining their smart meter program. In Florida, Florida Power and Light harassed and threatened to cut off power to their customers who didn't want a wireless smart meter placed on their home. Customers were told they had no choice. It was the law. It wasn't the law. It was a lie. Only after thousands of people complained to the Florida PUC, FPL was forced to offer an opt-out plan. Instead of offering an opt-in plan where customers could have the right to decide whether or not to participate, they were instead, after installation, offered an opt-out plan that charged customers $100 to have the smart meter removed, and an initial rate of $13 per month forever to not have a smart meter. This is called extortion. Wireless smart meters emit harmful pulsed radio frequency radiation in the microwave frequency band. Smart meters have also exploded from electrical surges and have been the cause of numerous fires in every community they've been installed in. The World Health Organization has ruled radio frequency radiation to be a class 2B possible carcinogen, the same as lead and DDT. By installing a smart grid mesh network in Hawaii, the PUC and HEI, or Next Era will be allowing dangerous pulsed microwave radiation to invade every home and business in the state 24 hours a day, seven days a week. There is no off switch on a smart meter like there is on a phone. And all radiation accumulates in the body. In the rush to upgrade the electric grid, the Department of Energy exempted vendors and utilities from doing an environmental impact study on wireless smart meters, devices which have never been fully tested and lack underwriters, laboratories, certification for safety. Check it out. No biological testing exists that proves radio frequency radiation emitted by smart meters is safe. Alternatively, Many studies exist concluding that radio frequency radiation, even at minute levels, far below those of smart meters, can alter and damage human cellular function. The Nuremberg Treaty, signed by all nations of the world after World War II states, no human being will be experimented upon without his or her consent, and before they give their consent, they have the legal right to understand all the implications, the health problems, the future health problems, and they have the legal capacity to say no. 
What gives HEI or Nextera or any utility company the right to force possibly carcinogenic causing radiation on other human beings without their consent? It's Thank you, all Mr. about Becker. the money. We don't need Nextera, HEI, or Smart Meter. Thank you. Yes, yeah, Stephen Palmier. I live in Stephen. Hilo. Stephen Palmier, P A U L M I E R. And I'm uh, opposed to this, um, the, all 16 of the uh, issues here. I'm surprised that the Carpenters Union has come in support of it, and it gives me pause because I know that working people organized are very, very effective advocates for the general public welfare. However, knowing that you are the public utility commission, and this is a public utility, I would hope that you would see the danger that those before me have cited about Wall Street, about the, the crises that go through uh, the financing of Wall Street corporations, and see that our key, our, our young people, and the people that depend on the energy that's produced, they, their, their futures cannot be uh, sold to, to, to a company like this. We need a, uh, a company that, we, we need a utility that is public, that serves the public. The other issue that I think is very important is the one of the Hawaiian sovereignty movement. There, there's uh, a, an effort to put a telescope on the mountain and, and a big problem of balance about the Hawaiian people, the Native Hawaiian people's rights, and, and what has happened with regard to uh, the issue of the occupation here in Hawaii. That should be a part of the Public Utility Commission's questions about any kind of expense on resources that have to do with this island or the, these chain of islands. It is a fact that we have to acknowledge, and that company should be asked what what would you do? You know, some of your profits have to be put towards cleaning up Pohakaloa or whatever. It will, be, it will take an enormous amount of energy to do that, so they'll have to provide it. And, and so that's the kind of thing that also has to be considered when you're, when you're asking a question about a, a public utility, a public resource that is something that we all use and is, and, and is a wealth that we all have. It's an investment for all of us. Thank, Thank you. you. Next. Hi, my name is Peter Hool, and I'm opposing the transaction. I'm for the co-op. I've got a business in Kao, and uh, we're global exporters of papaya. And uh, just to let you know, that I'm on the board, uh, HPIA, and I'm a board member of Orkland. Well, Mr. Mr. Yeah. Wilden. Item. Item G, I'm going to... Uh, well, you know, we, you will have an opportunity at the hearing to present your position on the issue. And so that's why we wanted, I said at the outset, only the non-parties. And since you are a member of that, you are a party. And so if you would let the others who will not have an opportunity to be present at the trial from November 30th on speak tonight, they will, you will have your opportunity. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Next. Hello, my name is Carol Araki Wailan. I, um, I strongly oppose this merger. This merger is only about money. Next Era did not do their homework. All they did was crunch numbers. They saw us as low-hanging fruit. They just wanted to pluck us and take all our money and we'd be helpless because we are subject to what is given us. We aren't rate payers, we've been rate takers. We've had to take what people give us. If we go with next era, we have to take what they give us. They might say now, oh, we will save you a billion dollars, but do they say how? They've never said how. Their promises are of money, but they're empty promises. They don't have plans. They say they don't have an energy plan for solar. They don't have plans for alternate technologies. They will have a plan 
in a year after the agreement is signed. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. It's about money. Out of sight, out of mind. They're going to take the best jobs and ship them to Florida. They're going to co consolidate their administration in Florida. We will have the low paying jobs here in Hawaii. The services will collapse. Out of sight, out of mind. And then when we think about Hawaii, I'd like to remind everybody that Hawaii is a land of the firsts. Ron Ronk wrote a book called Hawaii Firsts or Near Firsts. King Kalakaua electrified the Iolani Palace. It was one of the first buildings electrified in the United States. He became friends with Thomas Edison. This is on Helco's page. So in ways, it also is a sovereignty issue. But what I can say about Next Era is they didn't do their homework. They had their number crunchers come out. And we looked easy. We looked cheap. They could go about flashing around a lot of money. And I'm sure a lot of money has passed hands that we don't even know about. But we're more than that. We're a place of great new firsts and great new technologies. If you look at the Natural Energy Lab, where my husband and I had a business for 20 years, there are great technologies. There are amazing technologies being created all the time. Next Era is a dinosaur. Next Era is burning fossil fuels. Those fuels... Please summarize. Okay. Those fuels are damaging our environment. Look at how many hurricane threats we've had this year. It's because of global warming. So, thank, thank you. you for hearing me. I oppose this. Thank you. Next. Hi, my name is Gary Kitahata. And I'm sp What's the last name? Kitahata. Kitahata? Right. And I don't believe that the proposed transaction is in the public interest. And I'm speaking about this as a HECO shareholder. I voted my shares against the merger, and that's clearly against my economic interests as a shareholder, but there were a number of things in the proxy statement that I thought were of concern. When I looked at the uh, executive compensation, with the CEO being paid $11.5 million, with the next two executives being paid $8 million, or almost $8 million, those are big numbers. An even bigger number is the amount that J.P. Morgan, as the financial advisor, will get if the merger goes through, they will get $30 million. They've been paid $6 million to date. They get $24 million if the whole thing happens. But I understand that those numbers are logical in corporate finance, that the whole idea in corporate finance is to maximize shareholder value. And I appreciate that. But I think your question is about the public interest. And as a regulated public utility, the public interest is not being served in this case. And I think that if you can examine other alternatives, the way, the way that I look at power is like water. Water is sometimes done privately, but most often is handled as a public entity, as a public, publicly owned utility, or as a cooperative. And either of those models are worth looking into. So I'd urge you to do so. Thank you. Thank you. Next. Aloha, PUC. Oh, hold on, you don't want to testify on your tippy toes, so let's push it's that short. mic. Thank you. Thank okay. you, Randy Iwasi and the PUC, and I want to thank everyone who has spoken. I've learned quite a bit this evening, and I really appreciate this opportunity. My name is Jennifer Ho, I live in Hilo, and I wanted to uh, address part, I'm, I'm against the merger, and I wanted to address part of the public interest in the uh, issue one, um, especially item D. It, it's my understanding that if HECO backs out of their commitment, they're going to lose 40 million, and that if Next Era backs out of their commitment, they're going to lose 90 million. I don't know if the PUC has any uh, ability to modify that, but maybe if they weren't going to lose so much money, they would back out sooner and stop pressuring people and trying to uh, smooch their way into everyone's uh, good side. So I just thought that was, that sounds so uh, overwhelming, and it really does agree with what the man who graciously spoke before me was talking about, how a lot of money is involved that really is not uh, part of what would benefit us as the 
a great receiver. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next. Hello, my name is Jacqueline Benton Ching, and I would like to thank everybody for coming here, and thank you for giving us the opportunity to speak. I will uh, look at the issues for the docket and talk about my feelings about it. I'm opposed to the merger, and here's why. Hawaii is poised to be one of the first states in the United States to be completely alternative energy source. We deserve to make sure that our children have the opportunity to reap the benefits in their lifetime, since it certainly won't be in mine. We must remember our elders and how this great place, Hawaii, was a sanction of sustainability. We must also remember that money is not the guiding principle, that humans are the guiding principle. So I say no. We also have to look at Next Terra's track record. And we've heard some pretty amazing things. So again, I am in support of my friends and colleagues who spoke today on against the merger. And I also want to say if next Terra gets the merger, it certainly will be a next terror. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next. Hi, my name is Rockland Spencer Dicey. I'm from Puna. I live in the Hawaiian shores next to Hawaiian Beaches community. Um, I'd like to say that I'm against the merger. Um, I'm against the corporate business model because it does not serve the public. And um, a few years ago, the PUC listened to uh, my community speak out against Hawaiian Beaches Water Company. Um, when it was Miller and Lieb, we paid $22 a month for our water, no meter. Now, after the merger and after having several um, rate increases, my water bill goes between $70 and $90 a month. From $22 a month, to up to as high as $90 a month for my water. I am very much against corporations. I do not trust them. And I'm very sad that the PUC has um, allowed the Hawaiian Beaches Water Company to have all the rate increases that they asked for. Thank you. Thank you. Next. Aloha Chair and members Aloha. of the board. Um, thank you very much for giving the community an opportunity to weigh in because I know you have all of the data and much of the argument ahead of you in the court. But those of us who are individuals also, we appreciate having a say. My name is Deborah Ward. I'm a farmer in Curtis Town and I oppose the merger of NextEra. It's not reasonable and it's not in the public interest. NextEra has not demonstrated its interest, its intention, or its expertise in um, implementing our state's energy plan. Uh, NextEra has actually demonstrated its antipathy to energy independence at an individual and at a community level. It's demonstrated its power and influence to enrich itself at the expense of, its commu of, our, of Florida's community and others. Um, this is this is something that hits home to all of us because we are sure that when our money and our interest and our energy decisions are made somewhere far, far from us, 5,000 miles away or more, this will not really be a benefit to our community. And it's time that we demonstrated that we can keep our own energy future locally determined. Mahalo for your time. Mahalo, thank you. Next. 
Hi, good evening to the Commission. I'm Susan Irvine. I've raised my family in Hilo and now retired living here for quite a few years. And I'm speaking for my family to oppose this merger. I'm not an expert in electrical power generation, but I do know that we need to cut our use of fossil fuels now for the benefit of our Earth and generations to come. PECO has not done a great job of promoting a speedy transition to renewables here in Hawaii, but Next Era has done a much poorer job of bringing solar to Florida, the Sunshine State. Cajoling reluctant mainland company to get our state to its goals for clean energy would be much more difficult than pursuing cooperation from a local company like Helco. This merger would obviously be a financial windfall for the executives, but it would drain money from our state to pay shortholders, most of whom do not live or work in Hawaii. This is why, like one of our previous speakers, I voted no and then sold my shares when this came up at PECO. If Hawaiian energy companies wish to divest themselves of the responsibility, we have a number of possibilities for alternate ownership of power generation in Hawaii. I'm sure we've all read about Maui County considering the possibility of turning it to a municipally operated system. Kauai is a co-op and obviously here on this island they've been working on a co-op model as well. Please turn down this merger so we can move ahead to promote clean, sustainable power for our state. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next. Aloha. Aloha. My name is Gene Tamashiro, and uh, I have just two items to comment on. The first is that clean energy technology has been indeed perfected. Um, here on this island, we just opened up, the governor flip, flipped on the OTEC uh, uh, power generating entity that brings cold water from deep in the sea, interface that with the warmer water on top. Your solar panel is the ocean surface itself. Um, it works. And interestingly, one week later after he turned on free energy, the intake pipe was found floating on the surface. Okay, so OTEC has also been proven in Okinawa. Uh, I think about five years ago, they created an Okinawan um, OTEC Ocean Thermal Energy Conversion. Look it up. Now you take that ocean thermal energy conversion, free energy from the ocean, then you extract liquid hydrogen from the seawater itself. The technology for that is proven and the proof of the pudding is that the US Navy are introducing newly transformed warships that run on seawater. Look it up. Finally, I would like to say uh, for the Public Utilities Commission and any state agency that tries to exercise authority and it's interesting that you said sir that uh, we are not parties to the proceeding that the parties are actually somewhere else I don't know where but if we're not parties to the proceeding I don't know who isn't okay the last thing I wanted to say is I am a Hawaiian national I am lawful in my own country even though we don't have our de jure government yet we are working on it and we are doing it in the openness of the law and history and culture and everything else that is Pono. We're not perfect, but we're moving forward. So even if you decide that you will give Next Era in the face of overwhelming support against it, if you decide that you want to transfer from one bad guy out of the pan into the fire, no problem. That's up to you because a lot of us Hawaiian nationals are going to fight you tooth and nail because you don't have lawful jurisdiction in these islands. Mahalo. Mr. Tamashiro, do you support or oppose the uh, transaction? What you think, bro? I think you oppose, but I need to hear it from you. Uh, Next. Uh, my name is Danette Godinez. And what is your name again? Danette Godinez. Proceed. And I'm just going to echo the sentiment in this room, take it out of the private sector, put it in the public sector. Okay, We oppose any crook that's going to come in 
and try to take over what we can do ourselves. Okay? okay. Um, Helco, they're no good. Next era, no good. Um, the best way is to use the resources we have. And like any place that has resources that people want, we should be getting paid. We shouldn't have to pay for something we're providing. So I think you guys should really consider um, making a change. Get rid of all these corporations that are just ruining our world, not just Hawaii, not just America, the world, okay? It's evil, okay? let's just be honest. This is a no-brainer. We have everything. I didn't even know about what Jean said. That's like the sixth natural resource we can use to power up Hawaii and America and all kinds of places who will want our natural energy because it's not destructive. Okay. A lot of what's going on is destructive. Someone brought up the TMT. Destructive. They're destroying our mountain for the sake of their science. Okay. Our science. We already know all these things. Okay. We have a connectivity to ourselves, to each other, to the land, to the elements. We understand things. We don't need to destroy our world to understand these things. These companies are destructive. The people in this room, from what I'm hearing, are humanitarians. They love each other. They love the land. They love common sense. Common sense, use what we have. Stop destroying. Stop being greedy. Stop making decisions by how much money you'll make. And start making decisions on what is in the best interest. The question is, what's in the best interest? It's not these guys. Okay. We have what we need. We can provide for others. We don't need them to provide for us what we already have. Okay. So I think you guys need to go back to the table. And this to me is silly. This is silly. Why are we fighting over who gets to control our energy? To control energy that we know is not good for the earth. Uh, fossil fuels, someone mentioned. So you're still using fossil fuels. You summarize. Okay. The summary is no to this, yes to what is good and right. Thank you. Next. Hi, my name is Malian Leahy. I own a company called Co Specialty and I sell um, Kau coffee. And uh, I have an 85 acre farm. I live off the grid. And I happen to be someone who believes that you can. Um, make wise financial decisions while you're respecting people. Um, this just doesn't happen to be one of those um, instances. So I oppose uh, the merger. And the reason is because, you know, just being practical, why would a company that wants to make money um, buy, spend a lot of money to buy aging infrastructure that's completely technologically obsolete? And the reason is because if they think we don't have a choice, then they can hike up our rates and run the technology into the ground without making an investment. And we all can feel that, you know, putting that into words, um, you know, is hard because it's hard to face the reality that people can be that selfish. And I don't think we have a lot of selfish people in this room tonight. That's why. Everybody supports the cooperative. I was at the meeting um, that was called by the cooperative to um, hear the presentation from the Kauai Energy Cooperative. And I have to say I was honored to be there. And it was very enlightening because they have um, a, a manager who performs financially while being basically a virtuoso on the technology. And you know, at the same time, they're paying money back to their ratepayers at the end of the year. We don't want this merger because there's something better coming right down behind the, the, it on the pipeline. You know, final word is this is just not a good deal. So thank you. Thank you. Looks like you're the last speaker, so 
Please identify yourself. Yeah, my name is Michael L. Last, L-A-S-T, and it's, oh, I thought it would be the last one. Anyway, um, everyone here speaks. I guess you're not. No, I know. Everyone here is speaking about the merger against it. I'm an electrical engineer that specializes in electric utility rate structures, and I have to work on facts, nothing else. So I am neither for nor against the merger at this time. However, I am here tonight to question the motivation for Hawaii Island's electric supplier to become a cooperative and not continue as an IOU, an investor-owned utility. First and foremost is the misguided impression that co-ops save money, lots of money. Let's look at what Helco and the other island co-op bills residential customers. The following rates are for this month of September. I already have October's, I'm gonna just address September. And unlike some, I cannot predict what the rates will be in the future. No one can. Helco has a customer charge of $10.50 each month, plus an additional $1.42 for the green infrastructure fee. This fee is mandated by the PUC, and it goes directly to the Department of Business, Economic Development, and Tourism. The benefit of such involuntary contribution from each residential customer is extremely questionable. A large commercial user involuntarily contributes over $600 each month for the green infrastructure fee. Kauai residential customers pay a customer charge of $10.58 as opposed to our $10.50. Plus, for the green infrastructure fee, zero. They do not have to pay, they do not pay into this fund. How much does each kilowatt hour cost? Since January 2011, Helco has a tiered rate structure. That means that for each kilowatt hour above 300, the rate goes up, and above 1,000, it goes up again. Kauai has a flat per kilowatt hour rate, regardless of how much electrical energy is used. Now, what are the rates? Helco, the first tier, a little over 30 cents, not 40 cents like I heard, 30 cents this month. Oops, sorry. Um, oh, the help, the Helco bill. Um, oh, and then uh, the second tier is 34 cents. Please summarize. And the, the highest tier is 35. Uh, a customer using 300 kilowatt hours with Helco, we pay 23 cents a month more. 20 cents, 23 cents, that's it. Thanks very much. Thank you. Next. Aloha. Aloha. My name is Sativa, and I am in opposition to this bailout merger. Um, one of the reasons is because we have such a great opportunity in Hawaii, being outside of FERC, the Federal Energy Regulation Committee, to create our own regulations here. Unfortunately, um, when companies come in because we're outside of FERC, they can charge us as much as they want. That's why they want to be here. There's only two states outside of FERC, Hawaii and Alaska. In Alaska, they have a Hawaii-Alaska fund where they take their resources and they pay their, their um, citizens are the stockholders and they get dividend checks. We could ha this could happen. Now, the technology that's coming now is things like hydrogen generators, where you pour water in your generator and it goes all day and it produces steam and it's good for the atmosphere and it makes no noise. There's things like urine batteries that people are running their cars with. This technology is so new, it may not be marketed right now, but it's coming up in the future. It's almost too early to make this decision. And I don't know even, and with no disrespect, I don't even know if the people in the PUC are even qualified because the technology is so new that's coming. So many people can't even discuss it because it's so new. And so I think we should hold off. It's not the time to do this. And um, I think in the future what we're all saying is we want to consume the power that we produce without electric bills. It's very simple. We want to produce power, consume it, and not pay. 
And this is what they want all over the planet. And this is possible now, in the future, we, because we've run out of oil. They've had this technology for a long time, but they had a lot of oil. And they had to get rid of the oil first, so they held the technology back. Now they're running out of oil, so the technology is now being allowed to be filtered in. And this is the new age. And it's not about next, I don't call them next era. They're the previous era. It's like buying a jalopy when you can get the best car ever that runs on water or urine or whatever and you're not paying for it. So I'm asking the PUC to hold off because it's not the right time and you guys aren't even educated enough. I'm sorry, no disrespect is what's coming down the pike. None of us are yet. So it's not time. Let's hold on to HECO and let's move towards a cooperative where we can all be stockholders. In Alaska, every resident got $4,000 this year, not just from the oil, for the geothermal too. We can do that here because they have things like thin film now. No, no longer bulky solar panels. They have solar panels that are as thin as a piece of paper that they could run over the entire length of the school, of churches. Nobody's paying for electricity anymore. This is what's happening in the future. So we're hoping you take all this under consideration. We say goodbye next era. Sorry, Connie. But let's work together in the future so that we can all be free energy and um, self-sufficient. Thank you very much. Thank Aloha. you. Next. Next. Aloha. Aloha. Uh, my name is Justin Avery. I'm a resident of Hilo. And um, I really appreciate you folks coming all the way over to, to Hawaii Island to have this conversation. Very important conversation. Um, so just a couple of points. Hawaii County supported a clean elections program a few years back. That was good for, I think, four election cycles. Uh, essentially, that program took big money out of local elections. It was a great program, and a lot of the local county council people ran with that program. And Next Era is really the antithesis of clean elections and clean government. Uh, Next Era has a history of making large contributions to politicians, playing politics, leveraging money against the public good. Hawaii County, um, this was a couple years back, banned uh, fracking. Um, on the island, and um, Next Era is a strong proponent of fracking, uh, something that is just calamitous to the environment, and it's a technology that they are readily um, utilizing. Hawaii has strong support for sustainability and renewable resources. Again, Next Era is the antithesis of sustainability and renewable resources. Next Era is a big money mainland company more invested in PR and law firms than they are in the common good. Uh, I love this conversation here. I love seeing all these people here, these passionate people. And I encourage everybody who want to be a part of the conversation to join this Facebook group called No to Next Era, Hawaii Deserves Better. And I'd like to encourage PUC to please oppose this merger. Thank you. You oppose the uh, transaction. Next. Good evening. Good evening. Newton Chu. I'm a resident of Hilo. And um, I want to say that uh, Marco Mankelsdorf and Richard Hogg are good friends of mine. I have a ProVision solar system. But if they were to ask me why I'm supporting this merger, I would tell them this. I think it's the fastest way for us to get local control of businesses for us to go out and buy next era stock if this merger goes through. Support this proposal and if you want to start a cooperative, you got to go out and raise the hundreds of millions of dollars to buy it from next era or HECO because it's not on the table right now. So that's the reality of it. Uh, if next era is uh, selling power to its customers in Florida at nine cents per kilowatt hour, we're not even close. But if they can help us get closer, it's going to be a better deal when you purchase uh, Hawaii Electric Light Company from Next Era if it ever goes for sale. So, in support of this merger, I would say, in answer to the questions on the docket, the specific questions of the docket, 1A, yes, 1B, yes, 1C, yes, 1D, yes, 1E, yes. 1F yes, 1G enhance, 1H would not potentially diminish, 
2 yes, 2A yes, 2B yes, C yes, D yes, 3 not diminish, 4 not result in diminution, and I'm not familiar with the last two. Thank you very much for your Thank time. you. Next.